Today on Exploring Scotland's History, we're at South End on Kintyre. First place we're stopping at is Keel's Cave. Keel's Cave has a story about a bald dog appeared out of the back of this cave. Um, the farmer took it in and the farmer looked after it until it passed away and it was buried outside these caves somewhere. But there is a story. The dog was actually owned by a piper and when we head closer up towards Campbellton, I shall tell you the whole story of the piper's cave which apparently is joined to this one. Really unusual shapes. And obviously where the gulls come to nest. There is a series of smaller caves running along here, but they are really, really quite small in comparison. The South End headland will always be associated with St Columbus. We have some view up here, and I hope you can hear me with the wind, but we're off to see I think Columbus footprints first, then we'll drop down to as well. So hi on this beautiful promontory we have St. Columbus footprints. I right. The northern foot there at the top is carved in around 1856. The bottom one they reckon is up to a millennia BC. Both too early and too late. They do think that the Arabic numerals are 16th century. Right, so this allegedly is St Columbus Whale. It's a whale. It's filled with shells and two pence pieces. It's got some really nice flora and cobwebs. This is St Columba's Chapel, just beyond the well, um, considered 12th century. Most of the gravestones in the graveyard are much younger than that though. These are the graves of the crew of the schooner Anne. On the 7th of February 1883, she was dashed on the Arendemans barrels in the next bay round due to poor weather. The schooner was wooden and filled with slates so it didn't stand a chance. The captain, the mate and the cook were all drowned. One crew member was rescued by the local folk from the flotilla. These are the remains of Keel House, built by James Nicol Flemings. He had bought cheap linen in India and bumped up the price when he brought it back to Scotland. It was said to have more windows than Buckingham Palace, 
Tradition says he blocked two up in deference to the monarchy. In 1865, he was the director of the city of Glasgow Bank. He fled, leaving the bank in 1.3 million of debt. His fellow directors received eight month jail sentences because of the fraud. He returned three years later to serve his sentence. On his death, his estate was worth slightly over £15, paltry in comparison. The McKinnon Trust, which we have discussed in various videos, bought this for the Kintyre Technical School. Unfortunately, it burnt down a few years later and they moved to Dumbarton. This is the Keel Hotel. It was built between 1938 and 39, and immediately commandeered by the Navy as a hospital to 1947. The Navy and the RAF also used this place as a reference point as it can be quite clearly seen from sea. It was built by James Austin Laird. It is said that the ghosts of seamen can still be felt and seen around the hotel. It was unfortunately closed in 1992. blowing a hooli but we're going to go and see the remains of Dunaverty Castle and tell you its history. And that's where we're heading to. Whew, chilly. The fortification of Dunaverty is mentioned in the Annals of Ulster. In AD 712, Albert was besieged there by Seelbach, the King of Dalriada. In 1263, Alexander III garrisoned it against the invasion of King Hako. It was surrendered to Hako at this time. It was taken back by Angus Og MacDonald of Isla and Kintyre. Here he entertained Robert the Bruce in 1306. It was soon captured again by the English, looking for the Bruce, but he had already escaped. Angus Og backed the Bruce at Bannockburn in 1314 to strengthen his power. Clan Donald, Lord of the Eyes and Kintyre, had increased their conflict with the Crown and eventually King James IV dispossessed them in 1493. In 94, King James re-fortified Dunaverty and installed his own governor. Sir John Cassanach MacDonald astonishingly hung the newly appointed governor from the castle walls in full view of the king offshore on a boat. MacDonald then fled to the glens of Antrim, but he was betrayed and himself and his family were all hanged. Dunaverty was the scene of a massacre in 1647 involving Alistair McCullough and the Covenanting Four of General David Leslie. McCullough and many of his men escaped to Isla while a crew went with Archibald Moore MacDonald of Sanda and pressed south to Dunaverty to await their fate. Leslie led siege to the castle and cut off its water. Most were massacred when they surrendered a few days later. Archibald Moore MacDonald's son is said to have been smuggled to safety by his nurse, Flora McCambridge. The castle is said to have been demolished in 1685. There is very little to be seen of Dunaverty today. Traces can be seen on the southwest face of the rock when the tide is out. You can see why it would have been a stunning place for a castle. It's still a stunning place for a walk. So that was done with Verde Castle. Please like and subscribe to see where my next adventure takes me. Feel free to join me on Exploring Scotland's History on Instagram and also Facebook. Thanks for watching.